everybody, this is Steve with Free Sky North America, and today we're going to be talking about the Mixer Library. And this is something you've probably come across as you're looking through the radio system. It might not have been the thing that sold you on the radio system, but my gosh, once you start playing with the stuff, you're going to be addicted because your playing could do a lot more than you ever thought it did. Uh, a lot of these things you've seen elsewhere. I had Camber in... Um, high-tech transmitter from the 1990s I owned at one point so these are kind of like little extras that radio manufacturers put in um, ethos has quite a few of these in here it's probably the most robust mixer library in the market um, and it's going to grow and it's going to contract and the reason I say that is some of these things are going to change over time we're about to get into Ethos 1.5, so this free mix is going to be quite a bit enhanced, and these two are going to be removed. Um, so we already have a video on flaps, or quite a few videos on flaps. So I'm going to talk about the control surfaces, aileron, elevator, throttle, rudder. So um, these are the main things you would have when you're working with a transmitter, AETR. Um, and we are going to just kind of look at this and this is more of a conceptual kind of video it's not a nuts and bolts video i want to give you a practical example of why you would want to entertain having multiple ailerons in your mixer and if you go back here you can see i do have multiple ailerons in the mixer and why did i do that so let's give you the example that um, I've seen before somebody contacted me at one point and it was a guy who had a plane that had floats so about once every month to two months they would have at his local club a flying event over at the local reservoir and he would put floats on his plane to go out to the reservoir and fly the problem was the trims were horrific you know when he was he put the floats on all of a sudden you know the plane was a lot more sluggish it had something t that was uh, slowing it down those floats do slow down a plane especially a smaller plane like this guy had and so he uh, in order to combat that what he would do is he would have one model set up for where he had no floats for his local flying field days and then when he went to the lake he would have another model for the same plane and he would have the trims different for that one and so the idea was is that whenever he went to the lake he would switch over to this model but he would have to rebind and he contacted me about not having to rebind between these different models and i mentioned i said man this is a perfect example for flight modes because it does exactly the same thing so this is the one without floats and you go in here and you look at switch a and you say hmm okay this is not a lot going on here other than it's switch a this active condition is switch a up and there's no fade in no fade out but this is where you would have the different trims and independent trims per flight mode um so the idea is that when he went to the lake and he put the floats on, he would have different trims for that instance. Um, but I'm imagining a couple things. First of all, I'm imagining that he probably uh, would want to have different ailerons. So that was the whole idea of having a separate model set up because he could put different rates in for the ailerons and different expo curves in for the ailerons so we're going to do that and the other thing i'm going to do for extra credit is talk about putting a candy dropper on it so that uh, he could have drop candy from his plane that took off from the lake and have it fly over something somewhere and either drop off candy or drop off soldiers that come down you know in parachutes okay so we're back to the mixer and i did mention before that Right now we're in the main aileron mixer and what i mentioned was switch a had the three positions for either no floats floats or floats with candy dropper switch b and this is going to remain the same for each one of these is that 
switch B is consistently going to be something where floats are going to be 50, 40, or 30. And you're going to add rates. And the rates are 70% on this one. And then I'm going to show you one other thing right here, which is flight modes. And it's right here. You might have seen these before. There's a D and a 1. So D stands for defaults, and that's your default flight mode. Even if you've never played with a flight mode before, you've worked in a flight mode because there's something called default, default flight mode. And uh, that's always on until you use other flight modes. So in this particular instance, the default flight mode and no floats were the same thing. And so you can see that these are turned on, but these other two are turned off. They're not active. And when I go out of here, I go into the next one, and this is aileron with floats, and you can see that my expo had dropped. It was at 50%, now it's 35, 25, and 15. And the last curve was a 70. This is now the rates are 80%. So I'm imagining when you are flying with floats that the plane, because it's more sluggish and it has more um, drag associated with it, you probably want more ex less expo and more uh, rates uh, so that you have better control of the control surfaces. And as I mentioned before, if you go into that thing at the top there, you see the flight mode. The only one that's turned on is the one that says floats. And the last one, it does the, exactly the same thing. And you can see that I have 20, 15, and 10% as far as the curve is concerned. And then it has 90% rates. And of course, when I go into here, the only thing that's turned on is the floats with the candy dropper. And what I am imagining is that this is the setup. So in switch A, this is his flying field setup. So when he's flying at his local club without any floats on, this is fine. But the day that he goes to the lake and he wants to turn on his floats, all he has to do is flip a switch. So switch A from going from um, the high position to the mid position, all of a sudden he has floats with ailerons. And then during the day that might be at 12 o'clock, they uh, let people know that uh, there's a plane that's going to fly over the grass and drop candy off. And so it's going to take off in the lake. It's going to fly over the grass, drop off candy or parachuting soldiers, whichever you feel like working with in this example. Um, all we'd have to do for that one flight is flip the switch one more time. And there he has it. And then when he's done with that flight, he can go back into his aileron with floats on. When he's done flying at the lake, flip the switch A again, and he's just back to regular ailerons. Um, and we actually do have locking switches. I should mention this right now, because I know what you might be thinking. Like, my gosh, this looks great, but what happens if I accidentally flip on you know, aileron with floats and the candy dropper. It's going to be, the trims are going to be so different from ailerons. I, I don't want to ever risk that. Um, so we have these locking switches where you actually physically have to pull up on the switch in order to change positions. So that'd be perfect for a situation like this. And uh, we do sell them at Free Sky. And if you wanted to, you could send your radio in and we can install it for you for a nominal fee. Anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great day. If you have questions, please leave them in the comments.